welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, to the Vinnie Eastwood Show, broadcasting live from the fabulously fluoridated capital of Auckland, New Zealand, the island chained nation in the sunny slave South Pacific. It's not only fluoridated, it's also Fukushima irradiated, and the economy's picking up because everybody's managed to snap up a part time job as an incandescent light bulb. My very special guest is Dr. Uh, Richard Miller. Welcome to the program, Richard. Good morning. Or what it, What time is it there? It just turned midday. So it's, it's... Am I talking to someone in the future? Technically, yes. How far in the future are you? It's right now 3 uh, p.m. here. Okay, it's about, uh, I don't know, 21 hours ahead of you. Wow. Now that's a hit. <laughs> okay. You're in New Zealand. What's the weather like right now? How's your weather doing? Your forest fires? Uh, no, no, that, that's Australia that has the uh, the forest fires in, in New Zealand. The summers, um, we, we don't generally have fires in forests because most of our forests are rainforests. We have um, plains fires in uh, the South Canterbury Plains where they have lots of uh, dried, long grass and uh, alcoholic farmers. Ah, and uh, what was his name, The my precious? That would be Gollum. Yeah, there you go. Do you know what a golem is, actually? A well, golem is a Jewish term. Are you familiar with that? No, but I thought it was a media term, uh, you know, no, how somebody's got a golem and, golem a, in a local newspaper. Yeah, golem is uh, uh, Hebrew uh, for, it's, uh, for an artificial life form. What they do is they build a body out of material and then they Oh no, you're talking no, you're talking something totally golem. different. You're talking something totally different. You're talking about a golem whereas yes. a golem is G O W L L U M uh, as opposed to G O L E M. But well, I get your point. Pronunciations have to do with roots. Okay. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Don't worry about me. What would you like to talk about today? Well, you know, funnily enough, I was actually going to um, ask you that question because I haven't had you on the show for uh, a while um, and I, I have no idea what you've been up to. Well, um, Matt Stein um, is uh, uh, just recovering. His wife is recovering from cancer and we're trying to use one of our power tools uh, having to do with the difference between health and healing. I've just completed a new book. I haven't decided that. Originally, it was called Power Tools for the 21st Century. And it was the eight protocols I developed for Navy SEALs to make us supermen. They were toys, you know, things like uh, brain drivers, things like that. Now, there are some concepts called mythic living, where you work with archetypal forms in metaphor. And uh, one of the things I did this last year, I had like nine surgeries, primary surgeries. I've got titanium in all over my body. <laughs> you, I, you ought to see me trying to go through an airport. And when I did these surgeries, I used my automobile as a metaphor. I have a Datsun 1976 280Z that I restored. And so when I changed the rust in the left panel of the car I put a gauze in my gut you know metaphor and I I did this and today I'm 68 I'm probably in better shape than I ever was man I feel great um all bite the body is a mechanical thing uh, these exercises that I'm doing are in different layers of consciousness you uh you can work medicine, for example, and your health using metaphor. Um, what happened is that this person had a great deal of anger in her for a long period of time, and it was starting to affect their relationship with other people, her husband, etc. And what happened next was that she started to get um, some irritation in the body, which eventually escalated to cancer. The anger was causing the cancer. And what happened next is she got so concerned about her cancer, she forgot about the anger, revisioned it, 
And now there's no reason for the cancer. It's the way your subconscious tries to communicate to your consciousness when you're doing something that's counterproductive or not, you know, um, kind of like your true path, your purpose on life. Yeah, I, I find that so many times there's, I don't know, employment, for example, if there is ever an existing phenomenon that prevents you from doing what you should be doing in your own life, it's being employed for the most part. So many people are, are, are working all day, every day, and by the time they get they come home, they don't have time to, or the energy to work on their music or write that book that they've been wanting to. But um, interestingly enough, there was an article in um, a New Zealand newspaper a number of years ago that said being unemployed for uh, about a year is sometimes the source of some of the uh, the greatest uh, entrepreneurs and uh, and writings of our time, and I, I found that to be really a self evident truth. But but it it depends on whether or not you use all that free time to improve yourself and do those things that you never had the time to do, or whether or not you use that free time to uh, pity yourself and think that not having a job means you're not worth it. So with that in mind. I chose to title my book, rather than Power Tools for the 21st Century, I've decided to title the book, Taking Personal Responsibility for Your Own Evolution. Mm. It's all about your relationship to yourself and what your true purpose is on life. You know, Aleister Crowley, yeah, I like to quote from Aleister Crowley, sorry about that. Um, used to call that your magical memory, keeping a diary of what's going on at that exact moment and getting snapshots rather than what we normally call confabulation. You know, little snapshots at that moment, how you're feeling about something. You know, feelings are a higher form of the physical plane. There is no difference between the physical and the emotional except in detail. And really, that's why the higher part of ourselves always communicates with illnesses and things that require us to feel something. It's a part of the scales. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, what you just said there, to, to feel something, uh, I think it was just uh, when I was about to go on holiday at the end of last year i was starting to feel kind of uh, disillusioned with all of this you know doing doing the radio show and uh, yeah exposing yeah. scumbaggery and all of that kind of stuff and um i the reason do you do why, this once a week uh, no no five, uh five days a week uh oh, usually, man. usually wow. working six days a week on top of that doing other people's radio shows uh appearing as a guest I led a protest. Yeah, I've had several friends that said they had you on. Yeah, right. I, I, and I led a protest this weekend uh, down down Queen Street, kind of thing with the uh, the giant megaphone and the uh, full body <laughs> full body camouflage gear oh, and, that's and a, great, man. And that's a scary great. looking. That's what I want. All hail Eris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, that's rules. But what I was going to say was. Um, the 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 reason why I was feeling um, like I couldn't I couldn't go on or anything like that was 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 two reasons. Number one, uh, I was just exhausted because I do so much work. And uh, number two, I didn't feel anything different. Right? You, you know what I'm saying? When sometimes you yes, get in a rut, and it's yeah. because your perception of reality hasn't um, been blown apart recently. You know. Uh, uh, being a conspiracy talk radio show host, you get used to people saying things that suddenly makes you question your whole reality. And I'd gotten addicted to that right. feeling like a drug, and it hadn't happened for a while. Um, and well, catharsis, that place of nexus. Exactly. And uh, my conclusion was that I hadn't suffered enough yet. All right, like I, I needed. <laughs> you want to be a Jesuit? I've got a little cat of nine tails for you. Yeah. You just hurt so good. <laughs> well, um, what happened was I went up to my sister's place up 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 north here in New Zealand, um, 
And instead of being listened to, as I'm used to being uh, as a radio show host, I was kind of getting interrupted after every second sentence. I was being insulted, saying that all the things that I that I say are all nonsense and irrelevant and and, uh, and not worth listening to. Um, and I had this intense rage and uh, dissatisfaction as a result of that. And I had a profound realization. People who actually think that way, regardless of how close they are to you, was... Uh, the result of their brainwashing and enslavement (laughs) and it's not my fault that they're slaves okay and it's and it's not my place to take it personally and blame them for it either after all and this was the really good part of the of the the realization holy cow i'm Vinny eastwood i'm ridiculously awesome some of them are, you know. <laughs> well, you have a great accent. I have to give you that one, man. <laughs> yeah. No, you really do. I love it. It's uh, disarming. Yeah, yeah. Um, kind of like the Obama regime. And I also <laughs> wanted to... <laughs> uh, the context out of it was saying, um, uh, not only to myself as a realization, but also to uh, a lot of the people who listen to this radio show who's um, perhaps their, their, their partner who is uh, not awake yet or they're still living with their families who are not awake yet and they get discriminated yeah. against. It's not your fault that they're still slaves and brainwashed. You're not going to be capable of waking them up on your own. It usually takes a cumulative effect and something bad to happen to them, you know, like being, being arrested by a police officer for no well, good that's, reason. Well, or... the difference between health and healing, what I was trying to say. Mm. You know, you have options on that internal landscape thing and you can go one way or another in how you choose to approach something. You know what that's called it's called thought forms going into memory water and then precipitating from psyche into matter we create our own reality with our thoughts Mm. and so that's why you know you have to be very careful about the landscape you know I, i in this one chapter i was writing about um honesty and why you want to be honest and the one possibilities that you're looking back and you don't like what's happening you know if you get caught or punished and so you don't you're honest because you don't want to get busted or you could look in the other direction and there you want to do it because it's the right thing to do now, which way opens up which doors the irony being the, the irony being that if you are honest especially with police officers the likelihood of you <laughs> getting busted increases <laughs> Yeah, how's that? The world laughs at you. Yeah, I remember that joke. It's been around a long time. <laughs> the police officers. Well, they're my us. That's what it's always been about. I'm an outlaw, but not a criminal. <laughs> but I have my own medical marijuana card, so there. Uh-huh. Well, you lucky, lucky devil, you. There's unfortunately a lot of people in, in New Zealand. We've got the highest arrest rate uh, for marijuana than anywhere else in the world. Yeah, it must be really nice with that long ultraviolet that you have down there. <laughs> yeah, actually, um, in the international uh, schoolings, uh, sorry, sorry, um, in the international competitions for the strength of, of marijuana, New Zealand is usually right up near the top tier. Um, I saw some houses that were built with it. I saw that. I posted it on my website. Excellent trip. That's the reason it wasn't about the high you could get on marijuana. It was the fact that it could be used for a virgin white paper. That's why it's illegal. <laughs> well, I, I mean, that's... you know, it is a strong fiber. Mm-hmm. Well, the strongest natural fiber, I mean, other than um, perhaps silkworms. Um, and and that's, that's basically a very interesting thing. Like I've got hemp pants and, uh, and a hemp shirt that my mother bought for me for, for one Christmas. <laughs> And uh, all of the other cotton things and, 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 and what have you that I've been wearing for a similar period of time are uh, getting shredded or getting <laughs> faded or something wearing, like that. Uh, nature. Are they? Yeah, your 501 blue jeans. <laughs> See, what's interesting is that, is that the, the hemp clothing will go out of fashion before they go into disrepair. <laughs> Probably, but I've got a zoot suit, so there. And it's a Swiss banker's thing, and it was like a suit suit. It was an old Armani, and it's good to go, man. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Especially when I go to Amsterdam, and it doesn't matter. <laughs> 
Well, there was another funny thing about it. Uh, Amsterdam apparently had like a million uh, uh, French no, French no. people go go to Amsterdam uh, every year, uh, just specifically for the marijuana. And then when people in New Zealand started talking about marijuana tourism, um, the government says, "Oh, there is no evidence for anybody would want to visit this country if we legalize marijuana." <laughs> I know. Just, it's um. It's not about that anyway. It was the clouding of smoke. You know, there's still, I have a friend that runs the marijuana museum there, and his wife runs the Sensi Seed Bank. <laughs> and they have a place uh, called Nomads, which is upstairs. It's a disco that opens about one o'clock in the morning. And we're sitting there on the floor eating with our fingers, and Ann walks a belly dancer, private room. And only she's not belly dancing. She's doing 14th century folk dancing. Amsterdam. <laughs> it's a Fabulous furry freak brothers. Got to tell me that, man. <laughs> Fat Freddy's cat. They're all there. <laughs> all right. And we'll be right back with uh, Dr. Uh, Richard Allen Miller right after the break. Uh, NW Botanicals is his website. Back in a moment, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Vinnie Eastwood Show, broadcasting live on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. I had a Jehovah's Witness come to my door one time and, and say, Hey, did you know that God and science are getting closer together? And I was just like, well, you know, that uh, that doesn't surprise me, considering all the founders of society of science, like uh, Newton and all of those other guys, happen to be really deeply religious. My very special guest is Richard Miller, and you were telling me over the break how you had a background in physics and people were approaching you with paranormal things. And I worked for the military. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. what I did, yeah. Would you be able to explain to us kind of uh, how you went from that very solid scientific um, analytical approach to uh, getting into sort of the more uh, esoteric and maybe even occult fields of study? Well, okay, yeah. Back in my day, there were a lot of claims like firewalking and uh, the... Well, like Jack Schwartz was able to take needles and stab them through his arm, pull them out and stop the bleeding instantaneously. The Navy wanted to know how to do that. I always okay, wanted to I always stars. wanted to know I always wanted to know how to do that, so just in no, case I I mean like if you got shot with a bullet, how to stop your own bleeding. Oh wow. Just yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. with your mind. Mm. Okay. And so Menninger Foundation was set up in Topeka, Kansas with biofeedback, the first biofeedback that measured autonomic functions like brain waves and heart rate and things like that. Before that time, people weren't really doing that. They'd listen to you with a stethoscope, but they weren't measuring with strip charts on how your heart is changing and, you know, those kinds of things. And the military wanted to make super soldiers, you know, they could control that with their mind. And you can and with biofeedback. And all kinds of, uh, what is it, functional MRIs and toys. <laughs> there is a bunch of toys that you can, you know, train your body to, let's say, jump 50 years of meditation in three years using brain drivers. You can get to the same brain states that it would take a meditator 50 years to do and get there quick. Now, the problem is all quick shortcuts are just like to grandma's house there's big bad wolves and dangers obviously alistair crowley talked about drugs as a valid form of magic it is because magic is the art of changing consciousness at will which means it's basically a higher form of physics what magic is to you will be technology in 10 centuries breaker breaker one seven come on that's called telepathy, and yet we're doing it in our mind's eye with toys, which means we can get there using microwave, temporal lobes, that kind of thing. And so that's the kind of work I started. And when I was, my classic physics, when I'd watch someone walk across the fire, a shaman or a Sherpa, a white feather shaman that would walk up Mount Rainier barefoot, how does he do that? We don't like to know how to do that ourselves so that we could walk in snow and bake it naked. That's uh, the movie I was telling. Um, there's a movie, science fiction movie called Subject 2. And it's about DNA explain, uh, modifications to allow immortality. And what would that mean if you never died? An interesting movie. <laughs> yeah, he was watching Tyranny which is a, you know, a, move, a series on, on the internet uh, about 
you know, Poland in the 2021 and using remote viewing to predict the future and trying to do tyranny and fight with it. That's an interesting little series. Now, magic is basically where I started because it's a it's kind of like a discipline where you train your mind so that you can change reality. And there are things that you can do in this regard uh, using toys that will get you there quicker, like a brain driver, you know, frequency following function, brain entrainment, that kind of thing. You can learn languages very quickly that way. There's all kinds of things that if you have a certain kind of breathing rate, your functional boxing and the way you could fight is improved with your chi has to do with some forces that we don't even understand yet, but we recognize the validity of it, like in acupuncture, microtubule, electromagnetic fields around the body, things that you can do with that, that you can change other people's realities. You know, not laser main, you know, where you're doing sleight of hand, but the next level of it with your mind. Mm. We're talking about the uh, the possible limits of this, and uh, the subject of the Jedi, as in Star Wars, came up, and, and Jedi <laughs> <The> powers. <sports. laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. yeah. This is not the conspiracy theorist you're looking for. No, 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 no. May the Schwartz be with you. Yeah, I know. It was a great Star Balls. Uh, look, that there is no question. I wrote a paper in the 70s called The Omega Principle, and it was about the energy that patterns randomness. Now, if you want to think of it that way in terms of how you take your body as a water vehicle and you set up a radiant pattern form that goes into the environment, that's a good visualization of what really goes on. Structured water is the first foundation in all systems of magic. It has to do with electromagnetic fields and, you know, things like that with witches. And getting a witch off your trail, you cross running water. <laughs> Make a note. <laughs> You know, little secrets, yeah. They're all, it's like Walt Disney, you know, used to talk about um, the Sorcerer's Apprentice and he'd draw this circle around himself to keep the demons out. It's uh, all starts in your mind's eye. Well, this is also another interesting point. E- even if there wasn't anything mystical going on, you can actually see the results of your desires becoming reality. Um, myself, for example, exactly correct. It's it's a daily basis. I'll, I'll be right. I'll, be, I'll be thinking about something, and uh, all of a sudden, that, something happen. happens. Well, that's because your brain wants to agree and make your reality feel like it's working for you. That's it's not there to to separate reality it's there to make you believe it Mm. and conversely if you're thinking positively or thinking about what you want if you're thinking negatively and only focusing on the things you don't want those are the only things you will get you know my girlfriend's in in that current uh position whereby (laughs) she hates her job wants to quit and hates everybody else uh, um who is basically making her job harder around her um and i kept saying to her you know you've got to think differently about this you've got to start um accepting other possibilities that that if you're sitting home uh, after going to work all day and you're and you're all upset and stuff and then you come home and you're still upset uh, you ain't going to actually change the next day at work. The next day at work is going to be just as bad, if not worse. Well, the, there's a, the, the local Selma cartel where they grow all the pot here in Oregon. They have a little saying that says, I wouldn't have seen it if I hadn't have believed it. Mm. <laughs> you know, we create our realities. That is a fact. And that's what the importance of values and belief systems one of the things i trained navy seals was how to change a belief system like you were with a pair of clothing you know the 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 old what the bleep concept where the shaman sees the boat out there on the horizon and nobody else can because they don't have that concept yet Mm-hmm. And that's the part that we're trying to elevate now, leaving everybody behind. <laughs> mm. Just kidding. Well, yeah. uh, there's also no- another thing I want to put into here is the context of what you perceive to be uh, pretty or something that you like. Like, uh, for example, over the weekend, I told you I was uh, leading a chemtrail protest. And I was wearing full body camouflage and, and things <laughs> like that. And, you know, I had a lot of comments on those straight had a lot of comments on that photo uh, yeah. specifically from women saying that i look really really sexy in that camo 
and uh, I put a I put a um, a response on my on my YouTube page, and I said I had a few comments from girls on my new profile photo that I look sexy in camo gear. It's strange. Women in the West find men in uniform hot, whereas women elsewhere in the world run screaming from them in fear. Yeah, well, that's because I wear aluminum, and I'm an old, grumpy old man. See, you're still, you know. <laughs> you know, that's signs, you know, where you wrap your head in aluminum foil. <laughs> you know, trying to shield out the microwave. You know, this place is such a sewer. I, any self-respecting alien wouldn't want to come down here and slum in four space. Good God, they get all kinds of creepy crawlies. It's places down here. You know what Morgellons disease is? We figured it out. Yeah. It it was from the Challenger. What happened is the nematode experiments crossed with life forms in the xenosphere, and the trail where they fell is exactly the same areas where and they where they found the live nematode. And all of a sudden, now we've got something out of X Files with thing, your skin wiggling with these little metal worms, you know, that are basically uh, a nematode. Now, that's the good news because nematodes are easy to kill on your body. So people that have more gelins, there is now, once you know what it is, you can go after it. That's been the main problem with nematode and things like that was that basically uh, nobody knew what more gelins was. The Center for Disease Control still hasn't identified it. It's interesting. Mm, mm. Are you, you've heard of Morgellons? Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's it's the one where kind of fibers start growing out of yep, your pores, yep, uh, sort, yes. sort of thing. Um, yep. uh, some people. It's had, a new uh, nematode, is what it is. Some people thought it was a uh, result of uh, chemtrail activity and nanotechnology yeah. that's self replicating no, What happened was the Challenger. It happened right after the first uh, Morgellons started showing up right after the Challenger experiment. I wrote this for Nexus. Basically, the nematode was the only thing that survived that accident. And where the debris fell on Earth, they found living nematode. And some of it had mutated into this new thing that is, and it's airborne, which means people probably breathed it in their body. You know, that, that's how people get nematode is walking in bare feet and things like that. Uh, it's um, nematode is easy to clean you know I would recommend an absence ritual you know where we all got out and drunk and had a party and then sterilize everything in the middle <laughs> making absence I make an absence with yeah you're getting it now it works at wormwood will murder almost everything and then you would go back through your gut with green clay or a pyrolytic clay of some kind you know washing it out you probably and then you know do it again for the eggs mm -hmm. nematode like hydra lay eggs now a friend of mine in australia uh, was talking to a doctor and he was talking about more more gallons disease with yeah. her and she says Oh yes, I've got a couple of patients who have got more gallons, but it doesn't exist. <laughs> well, that's really interesting to the person that's got these wiggly things coming out of his arm. What do you think that is then? You know, it's pretty scary. And um, I wouldn't want to have anything creepy like that. You know, chemtrails and harp are... They tried to use all of those things to control the weather, you know, like they do silver chloride in the in the local clouds for airports and things. Uh, but what's happening on Australia is that that particulate matter from all those forest fires is going to cut the light out of the trees and and their forests, and it's it's called global dimming. And when that occurs, you will get weather changes. And what's happening is it's changing all over the world right now. I think they had in Europe they said something like. Um, was it they had nine currents and now it's down to four you know there's only four basic currents now in europe on the on the way the air moves now instead of nine they're changing we are in a global dimming situation or a weather event the weather is going to change for everybody it's uh real strange weather here where i live I, you know oregon now global dimming that's not a reference to the uh, average intelligence of people living on this planet is it what do you mean? Oh, no, yeah, really? Yeah, and leaving everybody behind. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> good play on words. I'll have to remember that one. No, it's, it's, it's how much light is hitting the actual plant from the sun. And last year in the United States, our global dimming for two months was down 10%. But in Russia, where they had all those forest fires last year, it was 35% for almost four months. That is what's changing 
the weather, is the amount of light the plants are hitting. You can actually, from space, look at the color of the Earth. It's browner. We're in a drought, a serious drought right now, and it's all part of the global dimming. Mm. Well, is, is that because when the sunlight comes through, hits the ocean, evaporates, and then creates rain clouds, so hence less sunlight, less evaporation, less well, carbon dioxide, yeah, and, and the amount of carbon dioxide because the light is, that's hitting the trees. Um, what photosynthesis, uh, uh, everybody's always wanted to know how photosynthesis, I'll do it the way Richard Feynman does it. Um, when a photon of light hits uh, water, what happens is that Feynman says like likes like. That means all the positive atoms go up there and all the negative atoms go down there. And what happens next, you have a battery just from the water and the reaction of light. The way cold fusion works is that they do this by adding deuterium and some other lighter elements so that when you get this separation, you strip hydrogen. And that's why they call it hydrogen fuel. And uh, I was going to do my 280Z on that, on a, you know, Brown's gas type of thing. And I chose, uh, that's a really lovely car, man, just like my body is. Um, what, I, what I did is I'm converting it this year to alcohol. I'm going to run it off my garden. I just grow some comfrey and make Jack Daniels back in the backyard there and run my Z off it. If I put red line oil in the car, I won't even need the Arabs or the Teamsters. See, I'm, <laughs> I'm way ahead of you. I already can make myself run on alcohol. I know. We all do that. It's that kind of alcohol, you know, which molecule you want to use. I'm, I, I was always partial to absence where you do wormwood because when you caramelize the sugar, it heats up the wormwood, and then when you lose it with cold water, the difference in temperature is where your green fairy comes out, and it's a rare trans, uh, translucent uh, green molecule, and that's how you know you got it. It's an actual narcotic that comes out of, out of um, uh, wormwood when there's a heat, very cold thing. That's with the, you know, the caramelized sugar dripping it in, and then you hit it with luge of ice water. As cold as you can get is as good as it gets. That's Garcon, right. Garcon, oh. i got to have some more warm one yeah, here. See, see, that's the same principle as the Clintons' relationship. As cold as it gets, that's as good as it gets between yeah, Bill really. and Hillary. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen, with Dr. Richard <laughs> Allen Miller. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's the uh, final segment here that we've got with uh, Dr. Richard Allen Miller. And um, he was commenting over the break about how much work I do. And uh, I was explaining that basically there's only three things I can do. And I've had to cut out everything else. Like the three things I can do is this radio show, my videos, and answering personal messages, uh, whether they be from uh, email, Skype, or, or Facebook. I have had to cut out everything else. Everything. Okay. Yeah, well, you didn't cut out Bob Dylan. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, and uh, that was the interesting thing that uh, uh, really occur occurred to me, uh, man, is, is just nothing else really matters. Uh, talking to people is actually, I think, a heck of a lot more immersive and fun uh, and enlightening than perhaps reading their book or watching their we or, or looking at their website or uh, watching their videos sometimes, you know? Horse's mouth. Heck of a lot more uh, interesting stuff from there. Um, so, uh, Rich Dr. Richard Allen Miller is my guest, and you have a number of uh, uh, things that you wanted to mention that you've put down in the, in the Skype chat here, far away. Well, just basically my website, if you want more information on what I'm doing, it would be at richardallenmiller.com, and A-L-A-N. Um, I have a lot of books out. I've written things like the Anarch. I was one of the four authors on Anarchist Cookbook. I wrote Magical Mushroom Handbook, Legal Highs. You know, I wrote all the early drug books for everybody. Um, now I'm a little more grumpy and uh, no more psychotic episodes for me. I'm just more. <laughs> the big brass bed for Bob Dylan sings about that's more like what I'm in for now. <laughs> you know, um, reading has changed has in it for everybody. YouTube has, uh, and the style. I write for uh, 
a newspaper called The Sovereign. It's out of New York City. It's a skateboarder for just your age. It's radical, you know, militant, blah, 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 you know, for New York City. And skateboarders, you know, someone that might have their hair in different colors. <laughs> and I write on the new directions of mind control on that. Talking about our food, how they're getting into our food choices and things like that. I just think that um, it's a shame what's happening now between them and us. It's like, I almost sense there's, in 1850s, I'm going to say this, in the 1850s, I think there was a close encounter. I think technology was exchanged, and that there are now two races of human beings on this earth, one with space travel and one without. And the discrepancy between the haves and the have-nots, the middle class, is slowly separating and the types of foods that they're feeding us it's no wonder every i mean everybody in japan right now is getting bald from the fukushima and they're getting fat because they're eating american diets and uh i'm watching uh what's going on in our world with the walmart shoppers there's your alien man <laughs> the zombie it's like um they're attacking us on our most basic foundations i would think that rather than privatizing water i would like to see food become an infrastructure like a recreational sport you start in kindergarten and half their playground is a garden and watch where that goes uh i you know i'm too old to do it it will be probably your children that will make the change in this world I, someone that's under six probably that's what i sense that's what i think is going to happen it can't go through the current educational system it will have to be something that changes like um, and what was that cloud atlas the movie cloud atlas the at the end of the movie the way they were teaching the teacher wasn't really a teacher she was an enabler and the kids teach themselves it was uh, conceptually it was really interesting i saw a different construct you know of the way you would teach someone something I don't, um, I don't have the answers, all of them. I'm just a nerd. And so I'm, I'm a nerd. You know, I'm, I, I have certain limitations in the way I look at things. And uh, I'm very concerned with education. I think that's where we should start. And we start with food. You know, where you, it's some kind of, not self-reliance, but an assurity like you have with air that you breathe. With the chemtrail things, I guess that's gone now. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's so weird. I remember my 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 website starts off with a with a quote from uh, Chief Seattle, Chief Seattle, uh, in 1854, about three years before the Carrington effect. He said, "How can man own the air he breathes? How can he own the land he lives on? And we're just caretakers. We're here for a moment, and to have ownership is crazy." It um, doesn't make any sense the way we're living. There's a, a really good set of videos called Zeitgeist that's on the internet. And the one that you, oh, everybody should take time to see is Zeitgeist Moving Forward. It's a two hour, uh, it's not the one on 9-11 where they show that a thing was uh, detonations. What this one does is it says we've had 400 years of currency. It doesn't work and it's time to move on. That's mm. basically, and it includes epigenetics. Mm -hmm. Well, there's uh, two things I'd like to mention there. Uh, firstly, when Zeitgeist 2 and Zeitgeist 3 were screened in New Zealand, um, we had, uh, you had to pay 10 bucks to get in. I was the only person who got into both of those screenings for free. Uh, because I'm Mr. News, you know. Well, <laughs> there, there you go. <laughs> but was, they're free now anywhere on the, you can download them. Well, exactly. But this is just a premiere and they had to hire a theater and everything to recoup yeah, the cost. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So you understand that. Um, People say and they think they're getting something. Now, and, the <laughs> sec and the second is uh, the leaders of the Zeitgeist movement in New Zealand are my friends and everything like that. You know what they all have in common? Very no. wealthy parents. All yeah. right. So you've yeah. got a group of you've got a group of guys who haven't actually really had to uh, struggle and suffer and and, and work right. for the majority right. of their life for some reason pretty obvious to uh, to me getting into a zeitgeist movement which says we're going to get machines to run everything and you'll never have to work a day in your life. 
Well, there's that free energy move I've heard of, too, also. I didn't know that part about Zeitgeist. I, I didn't. I was watching, like, when George Carlin, I love George Carlin, when he came on and he said, God has everything, but he needs more money. <laughs> I mean, really, uh, the whole thing, uh, I had on my website that one building uh, I had a physicist friend of mine do a calculation on it and how fast within 3% it was free fall. It would have taken my seal unit probably three months to rig it that precision and have it fall. And there were three buildings that were demol de demolished like that. Pentagon wasn't hit by an airplane. <laughs> what did it then hit it? And where did that come from? And what happened to that airplane that supposedly crashed with all the people killed on it? And then, oh, it gets better and better. Let's The Aurora shooting there's this woman sitting next to the guy that did the shooting in court and she is the same mother of one of the dead children in sandy hook how does that work i mean really i'm watching all of this stuff on false flags knowing what i know as as ex-military i mean i i just going i can't believe it and nobody is reporting it not really i mean nobody even al jazeera I mean, you know, I thought at least, you know, maybe they would. <laughs> I did like Al Jazeera um, up until a I few did too, but now it's up a, until a few years ago, I think yeah. they they just changed yeah. and they became so mainstream all of a sudden. Well, they're Fox News now. I heard. <laughs> yeah, pr pretty much, and um, I think it might much. have happened uh, since the Iraq War, when a lot of their really hardcore journalists and editors and everything like that just simply got blown up, and nobody came in to replace them. I'll give you something about Iraq that's interesting. Um, I, when I worked in the military, I was Navy intelligence, and we knew about an artifact in the south, uh, in the north part of Iraq, in Yazidis country. And Aleister Crowley wrote about it, and then the church came out about 100 years ago with Yazidis, the sacred, uh, uh, what is it, the sacred ceremonies of the Yazidi or something like that. It's Joseph Isaiah. And really it talks about an artifact in the deep catacombs of which the father Bush couldn't find. And the second Bush, the reason he invaded Iraq was he, right after the invasion, he's, we had tomography. <laughs> I can see where it was. They, he got on board ship with all his ribbons and everything on, and he said, we got it, the war's over. And then the next couple of years, the last couple of years, have been a false flag. What it was, was uh, a, what they call it like a stargate. It isn't a stargate. What did it, I don't I have no idea, because I didn't get it. We knew about it in the 70s. But nobody knew where it is. And the interesting part is, I have a copy of the Yazidis here. So I have the old, you know, because that was one of the things we always wanted to get. It was a big door where demons ran in and out of it. And there was a whole cult based on this thing called the Yazidis. And um, now the book, Joseph Isaiah's book, suggesting there was a second door. And they think it's in the ocean, but they haven't been able to find it yet, even with tomography. So what does it do? I haven't got a clue. Probably dimensional gate to Mars. <laughs> well, I saw top secret documents about Mars uh, before even the moon was, ne we were never interested in the moon. Mars had water. It was in 1964 when they just, the Mariner 1 went by and it discovered the amount of water on Mars. On my website, I had a picture of the Earth. I have a picture of the moon. And then I have a picture of the ball of water on, from the Earth. And then I bring a fourth ball, a, a ball in on the amount of water on Mars that they just have discovered, and it's more water than on Earth. It's a new form of structured water that remains a slushy ice down near 100 Fahrenheit, below Fahrenheit. And uh, it's just from the pressures and things like that. If you were on Mars, um, it would be, if standing on Mars, to give you the, how thin the atmosphere is, uh, your feet would be at like at 70 degrees, your head would be at minus five. That's how thin the air is on Mars. And so they tried to terraform it at one point, and it Richard, didn't work. Richard, I'm sorry, we've uh, run out to the end of the show here. So his website, ladies and gentlemen, is Richard Allen Miller, if you wish to observe more of his work. Thank you very much. And coming up next are Sherry Kane and Len Horowitz. No matter where you live, globalism affects you. Did you know that the Vinnie Eastwood Show has more subscribers than New Zealand Herald TV? 
and is New Zealand's most popular YouTube news channel where warm-hearted humour and a list of awesome guests talk about crucial issues which the mainstream media ignore. A show where you, the listener, can phone up with questions, comments and suggestions of guests. Vinny is building a hub to connect truthers with raw information they need to become active. He can help you gain further skills such as website building, producing audio and video, and creating revenue streams in your own multimedia environment. Because Vinny supports such a wide range of people in the truth movement, he is not government or corporate backed and relies entirely on your donations. Give now, give generously, or subscribe for $10 a month for access to ad-free video archives. Just visit the vinnieeastwoodshow.com and click donate. If you take an active interest in maintaining the optimum health and well-being of yourself and your family, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is the magazine you've been waiting for. Having taken Australia and New Zealand by storm, the New Zealand Journal of Natural Medicine is now available in the UK and Europe. Visit www.nznaturalmed.co.uk or call 01626 337 531 to order your copy now. Do you realize every day we are being put under constant stress from wireless radiation? What's worse is that you don't even know that it's happening. It puts as much stress on our body as if we had a constant viral infection, draining our energy and sapping our strength, or just making us irritable and fatigued. These wireless fields are being emitted from computers, microwaves, mobile phones, power lines, and any electrical appliance. Now there is a solution. A group of research engineers in New Zealand have come up with an active shielding device that shields you from wireless radiation at a cellular level. Blue Shield comes in three models, a household, portable and USB that plugs into any computer. The great thing about Blue Shield is it is very affordable and guaranteed to last. A one-off purchase will see you being protected for years to come. Visit AmericanFreedomRadio.com and click on the Blue Shield banner. Blue Shield, brought to you by the Show.com. I'm probably in better shape than I ever was, man. I feel great. Um, all bite the body is a mechanical thing. Uh, these exercises that I'm doing are in different layers of consciousness. You, uh, you can work medicine, for example, in your health using metaphor. Um, what happened is that this person had a great deal of anger in her for a long period of time and it was starting to affect their relationship with other people her husband etc and what happened next was that she started to get um some irritation in the body which eventually escalated to cancer the anger was causing the cancer and what happened next is she got so concerned about her cancer she forgot about the anger revisioned it and now there's no reason for the cancer. It's the way it's uh, for an artificial life form. What they do is they build a body out of material, and then they. Oh no! You're talking. No, you're talking something totally different. You're talking something totally different. You're talking about a golem, whereas yes. a golem is G O W L U uh, M as opposed to G O L E M. But well, I get your point. Pronunciations have to do with roots. Okay. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Don't worry about me. What would you like to talk about today? Well, you know, funnily enough, I was actually going to um, ask you that question because I haven't had you on the show for uh, a while um, and I, I have no idea what you've been up to. Well, um, Matt Stein um, is uh, uh, just recovering. His wife is recovering from cancer and we're trying to use one of our power tools uh, having to do with the difference between health and healing. I've just completed a new book. I haven't decided that. Originally, it was called Power Tools for the 21st Century, and it was the eight protocols I developed for Navy SEALs to make us supermen. They were toys, you know, things like uh, brain drivers, things like that. Now, 
there are some concepts called mythic living where you work with archetypal forms in metaphor. And uh, one of the things I did this last year, I had like nine surgeries, primary surgeries. I got titanium and all over my body. <laughs> you, I, you ought to see me trying to go through an airport. And when I did these surgeries, I used my automobile as a metaphor. I have a Datsun 1976 280Z that I restored. And so when I changed the rust in the left panel of the car, I put a gauze in my gut, you know, metaphor. And I, I did this. And today I'm so Welcome. Ladies and gentlemen to the Vinnie Eastwood Show, broadcasting live from the fabulously fluoridated capital of Auckland, New Zealand, the island chained nation in the sunny slave South Pacific. It's not only fluoridated, it's also Fukushima irradiated and the economy is picking up because everybody's managed to snap up a part-time job as an incandescent light bulb. My very special guest is Dr... Uh, Richard Miller, welcome to the program, Richard. Good morning. Or what? What time is it there? It just turned midday. So it's. Am it's, I talking to someone in the future? Technically, yes. How far in the future are you? It's right now three uh, p.m. here. Okay, it's about uh, I don't know, twenty-one hours ahead of you. Wow. Now that's a hit. <laughs> okay. You're in New Zealand. What's the weather like right now? How's your weather doing? Your forest fires? Uh, no, no, that, that's Australia that has the uh, the forest fires in, in New Zealand. The summers, um, we, we don't generally have fires in forests because most of our forests are rainforests. We have um, plains fires in uh, the South Canterbury Plains where they have lots of uh, dried, long grass and uh, alcoholic farmers. Ah, and uh, what was his name, The my precious? That would be Gollum. Yeah, there you go. Do you know what a Gollum is, actually? A well, Gollum is a Jewish term. Are you familiar with that? No, but I thought it was a media term, uh, you know, no, how somebody's Go got a Gollum in, Gollum in a local newspaper. Yeah, Gollum is uh, uh, Hebrew uh, for 